After seeing the first episode of House of the Dragon yesterday, I immediately felt I had been transported to the moment I watched the first episode of Game of Thrones back in 2011. For all the anger at how the series bungled its ending and the antipathy I felt towards the, this new series, that is the best compliment I can think of. Nobody knew how Game of Thrones would, would eventually develop, but I dare say we at least had five seasons of excellent television that allowed fans to rampantly speculate. Now, three years since we left the fantasy world of, from author George R. R. Martin, viewers get to return. I cannot, I, I cannot possibly say how House of the Dragon will unfold, but after watching yesterday's hour-long episode I am confident it will at least be very entertaining. House of the Dragon is in many respects similar to its precursor series when it comes to its themes, su succession crises, feudal intrigue and a plethora of moral ambiguous characters. House of the Dragon is an adaptation of unusual source material, based not on any novels but on a, but on a companion book with the title Fire and Blood that tells the history of House Targaryen. The source material was appreciated by fans, but not by average readers as Fire and Blood pretends to be a factual recounting of history by Archmaester Gildane. How strict this adaptation will adhere to the book is unclear. Fans have long noted that Gildane is an unreliable narrator. As such, there is plenty of room to make changes should the show's creators decide to spare some characters. Right from the start, the show imbues quality through its acting. While most of the cast are not household names, certainly not in the US, I can at least remember f some of them from other roles and they offer solid performances throughout. There is currently a core of five characters the show focuses on. Paddy Considine plays King Viserys I, a man who is capable but somewhat insecure and whose minor missteps will prove disastrous for the realm. He is no Robert Baratheon, but the road to hell is paved with good intentions nonetheless. He is aided by the Hand of the King, Otto Hightower, played by Rice Evans, a somewhat timid character who also has an undercurrent of ambition as he is, as he is the second son who stands to inherit nothing. In the first episode they are opposed by the king's brother, Damon, a violent man with a get in your face attitude. Played by Matt Smith, his character, an evil version of Jamie, is easy to dislike. However, his motivations are not easy to understand and some of the tender feelings he shows towards his family allow the possibility he is a red herring. In extension to the three characters directly involved in the succession are two young women. The king's daughter Rhaenyra, played by Millie Alcock, and Alicent Hightower, daughter of Otto, played by Emily Carey. Rhaenyra is by the end of the episode made the king's official heir, while Alicent has every prospect to become the king's next wife after his wife and only son die. The two young women are close friends, but foreshadowing tells us this, this won't last when the succession crisis lasts in, will last into the next generation. So far, the story feels a lot like other series such as The Borgias and The Crown, and that is not a bad start. Just as with The Crown, there will be time jumps, necessitating a change of actors. The first to be replaced by the midpoint of this season are Rhaenyra and Alicent by Emma da Darcy and Olivia Cook respectively. Much of the first episode lays down the groundwork for the upcoming succession crisis. It is a running gag throughout the works of George R. R. Martin that no Targaryen succession runs smoothly. The episode in fact starts with the contested succession of his service. A, gra a great council has to be called to, to decide whether he or his niece Rhaenys should succeed, the latter being King Jaehaerys' daughter. So, so the show stumbles from one succession crisis into the next. I say succession crisis, basically it is a war known as the Dance of the Dragons, a war that nearly destroyed the realm. Of course, calling it the Dance of the Dragons means there are plenty of dragons. Practically every Targaryen rides their own, 
In the first episode, they were present, but they did not dominate the scenery. I'm at least pleased by that, as we will eventually get to see them in action a lot anyway. What did we see was a lot of blood, gore and nudity, in the best traditions of Game of Thrones. Most of it involved Prince Daemon. His persona seems to dominate most events at court, even if he appears to have few allies. Then this is a good moment to mention Myceria, the paramour of Daemon. Played by Sonoya Mizuno, her character is a mysterious femme fatale from the same mold as Melisandre, nudity and all. After seeing Sonoya play in two major productions by director Alex, Alex Garland, Ex Machina and Deaths, I was happy to see her play what appears to be a very enigmatic character. Knowing blood, uh, fire and blood dust, I know Mysteria should eventually become the mistress of Vispus to Daemon. And so, we have the first episode of House of the Dragon. It is a competent retelling of fire and blood, with plenty of drama to flesh out the story and characters. I have read some negative reviews, here and there, often making some sort of comparison to how Game of Thrones ended. I think that is unfair. House of the Dragon stands on its own. I hope this series will do the source material justice, just as I hope next week's Clean Slate series, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, will do the original no novel justice. Well, I hope you enjoyed this brief review of House of the Dragon. I am all set to watch the entire season. Please hit the like button, that will, will really help me out. If you want, you can also su subscribe to my channel, that way you will never miss a review.